state of the crypto market. Don't FOMO. I'm the altcoin analyst. Nothing here is financial advice. Let's dive in. If we look at the Bitcoin chart and we start drawing out some trend lines here, we can see that we've been watching this level for a while. Now, we did come down below it and end up breaking back above it. So what does that mean? Well, I think in the short term, we have to see if we actually break this downtrend that we're in, where we've put in a high, we've put in a low, clearly have put in a lower high and a lower low. And now it's yet to be seen if we're going to put in yet another lower high and then come back down and put in another lower low. What am I going to be watching in the short term? Well, if we go to the four hour chart, and I think it's a little bit easier to see on the four hour chart we can begin to start to mark out some, I think, important levels here. The initial price that I'm gonna be watching is what we're at right now is the $64,000 level. Is this going to hold or is it going to break above it? Because if it's going to break above it, the next level we need to keep an eye on is 67,000. And so if we can definitively break above both those levels, reclaim them, I tend to think we're going back to range highs. Does that mean we're going to go to new all-time highs? Well, again, I think it largely depends on what the stock market is going to do. Because on Friday, we did get some what I consider to be more neutral. If anything, I, I tend to think it was more bearish leaning employment data. But the market thought it was bullish and, and rallied. So again, I, I tend to think it was probably neutral, maybe a little bit bearish leaning, but if we go to the stock market, we can see that the price action did gap up very nicely today. Is the stock market going to put in a new all-time high? Because if the stock market puts in a new all-time high, I think we're probably going back to range highs for Bitcoin. Now, let's look at the, that unemployment data. Now, we can see that generally speaking, when the unemployment rate gets above 4%, it, it doesn't really end well. It generally means a hard landing is, is coming. We went from 38 to 3.9% for the unemployment rate. So let's auto fit this. There we go. Now, I, I think the reason that the market took this data as more bullish is because the job openings, I think, were probably what what we're leaning more on the bullish side as opposed to the unemployment rate continuing to tick up. So that's something to keep into account because again, I think the openings number, I mean, I tend to think the unemployment rate is, is really what, what we should be watching here in terms of recession, not necessarily the openings because I feel like openings can, can open and close very, very quickly. So I, I think the unemployment rate is probably what I'm going to be looking at the most. But again, the reason the stock market probably gapped up higher is because it was interpreted that the job openings data was more bullish, which again, I, I probably would agree with now. But again, the unemployment rate did tick up something to keep into account. If we go back to the Bitcoin chart here and we go to the weekly, it seems like more of a distribution phase right here. And I talked about this in my previous video. We did have the Grayscale ETF print a inflow day for the first time since launch. But again, if we had a bunch of buyers, I don't think we would be going through the distribution phase. It makes me think that there's a lot of sellers. And so that's something to keep into account. Now, we do notice the Bitcoin dominance is going back up. And I, I very much think this is going to break up. So... If we do go back up to the range highs, which I think at this point is possible if the stock market is going to remain bullish, I think we're going to see the Bitcoin dominance really break above this level and really start that uptrend higher. If we go to the ETH BTC chart, we can see that it's it's breaking down again. So these are all, if you're new to my channel, these are all lines that I, I use to show how the money moves through crypto i think it's it's very easy to to see within the ETH btc chart and oh i don't want to get rid of that and, and it's coming back down to range lows here so on every dump we get a nice little pump 
and then it just kind of like zigzags through until it goes lower. And so I think it's going to continue doing this where it, where it pumps, dumps, and then just keeps zigzagging lower until ultimately I think we're probably going into this range right here. And then we might have some sort of capitulation down into this range where we end up putting in that bottom. Now, if we look at what's happening with ETH here, and this is a pattern I've drawn out where I think we need to see how this plays out or, or not a pattern, some trend lines. Because if we noticed here, every time EPTC is kind of put in a uh, an uptrend, every time ETH is kind of put in an uptrend here and respected this level, it's gotten a pump and then it's followed by a dump and then it's broken down into a or started to break down. Again, we saw the same thing over here. And then we saw the same thing over here. And so I'm wondering, maybe, is this pattern going to play out again like that? Where it's going to kind of bounce along this trend line, maybe pump, get a lot of people FOMO'd in, and then dump, and then ultimately probably come back down here. That's what I would be thinking is probably going to happen with ETH. Because, I mean, this is one of the reasons I titled the video Don't FOMO, and we're actually going to bring up the social risk, because I think the social risk does a good job of displaying that. Every time we get some sort of green continuation or green candles, the market seems to think that <laughs> we're going up into a mania phase and, and to FOMO in. And I'm here to say, don't FOMO, don't trade on your emotions. It's not good to buy things because you think they're going up. I think it's good to build a strategy around different criteria that when it triggers you get into the market and when it triggers and then you have a set of triggers for when you get out of the market and so i think i'll bring up the social risk now because as you can see every time the price goes down we see the social risk going down and then when the price goes up we see the social risk going up so it's just the price is going up so everyone's like mania phase mania phase mania phase new all-time highs i'm gonna get rich and then price goes back down. And so I feel like crypto Twitter <laughs> has like short term memory where they don't really look at the whole chart. They're just simply pointing to these green candles here saying, guys, bull run. And all these influencers are getting together saying, look, we're going up. You have to buy now. You don't want to miss out. And I just don't think that's a good strategy. I mean, we're in a downtrend right now. So until the downtrend breaks, I'm going to assume that the downtrend is going to continue. In my mind, the downtrend is going to break if we reclaim 67,000. That's when I would say, okay, we're probably going back to range highs, maybe new all time highs. But until that happens, every green candle, it's just that's just how the money is going to move through the crypto market. It's Bitcoin dominance is going to continue to go higher. ETH BTC is going to continue to go lower. And so I love how people are just saying that ETH BTC is like is is bottomed and is going up. But I mean, it's just done the same thing it's done the past two years. And ultimately, I think it's coming back down. So something to keep in note there. If we bring up the color coded risk levels, we can see that we've actually bounced back to the 0.6 level. And we, we, we came out of the 0.5 level, went to the 0.6 level and that's not really notable other than I think that I tend to think we're competing against the stock market here. If we're going up into that left translated peak, we need to the, we need to step on the gas because I tend to think the longer the unemployment rate is going to continue to go up, the longer interest rates stay elevated, the more likely a recession is ultimately going to come. And I have a hard time believing that if a recession comes, that Bitcoin's going to go up. Why do I have a hard time believing that? Well, if we look at the past price action and we overlay the S&P on the only recession we've had, which was over here, both Bitcoin and the S&P went down. So if we do go into recession, I tend to think Bitcoin's going to go down. So something to keep an eye on as well. Going back to the unemployment rate and a recession risk, we can see that Google laid off hundreds of core employees this week and has started to move positions to India and Mexico for cheaper cost. Something to think about because, again, 
as the interest rates stay elevated, people that need to finance their, their balance sheet are going to have to do so at a higher rate. And they're going to have to then offset that increased expense to finance their debt, probably in payroll, which means they're going to have to lay off employees. Something to think about. And again, the other thing we need to look at are the banks that have collapsed and New York Community Bank Corp. Well, we know First Republic Bank collapsed a while ago and well, actually pretty recently, I think in April. And the New York Community Bank Corp is still kicking for now. But again, this was one that was having trouble with a lot of they publicly came out to say that they had a lot of bad debt linked to commercial real estate. And I think they got backstopped. But again, it, it's too soon to tell whether or not New York Community Bank Corp is going to suffer as well. But all these regional banks are going to start as long as the interest rates stay higher, are really going to have troubles here. And I think in the next coming months, and it's going to put a little bit of strain on the larger banks. And as much as I want to believe that the Fed just going to backstop everything and, and recessions no longer exist, the risk is like bad inflation. So do we want to go to the grocery store and pay $100 for eggs for like a carton of 12? Probably not. Like, I think that's a worse scenario than a recession. I mean, they're both bad outcomes. I don't want either one of them. But if I'm thinking, do I want to do I want inflation or would I rather have a recession? I don't really want to go to the store and, and every time you go to the grocery store, it costs a thousand dollars to to buy groceries. And again, I also probably don't want a recession, but that's the give and the take that we're playing with. So it's not really the the Fed can't really dictate an outcome. They just try and put together the best solution to minimize both inflation and to minimize the recession. Is it going to happen? I don't know. But so for those that think a recession is not going to happen because the Fed is simply just going to backstop and print all this money, the end result of that is going to be we're going to the store and and, and groceries normally are what, like 100 bucks, 200 bucks for a week. Maybe if you have a family of five, they're like a lot more. But if we go to the store in that scenario where we're experiencing inflation, it's going to cost like a thousand bucks a week. And so hyperinflation and inflation is not ever really a good thing in history and it always destroys fiat currencies will this happen to the us dollar i i mean probably but maybe not in our lifetime i think we might consider like continuously see inflation but probably not hyperinflation unless some black swan event happens so long story short here <laughs> a recession i think is likely because I think the ladder of hyperinflation is a lot worse. So keep that in mind. Again, I don't think Bitcoin and, and crypto are really going to do well in a recession. And I don't think anything's come out that's gotten rid of the looming recession or potentially a looming recession. I don't think anything's came out that's really gotten us out from under that cloud. So again, I, I remain cautious. Probably, I want to see how the back half of this year plays out. Let's get to the point where the Fed needs to cut rates. And and we'll go from there. Because again, like I said, I have three strategies in crypto. I DCA Bitcoin, I yield farm stables, and I buy altcoins when I think they're undervalued or when I think a mania phase is coming. And I do not think a mania phase is coming. Because if we go to the Bitcoin dominance again, a mania phase it happens here. happens here before the mania phase we see a downtrend of the bitcoin dominance a downtrend of the bitcoin dominance allowing or, or signaling that the market is moving money from bitcoin to the altcoin market and so that's generally when i think alt alt season is around the corner right now we're breaking out we're breaking up so i'm going to be looking for this pattern to play out again and that's when I'll get interested in altcoins. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.